life starts good news. That's the music he's going to. Come back in style. I'm glad this day is over. Not because it was a bad day, it was a good day. But I'm glad this day is over. The uncertainty that has been dangling over our heads, the teasing from the Fed, which had us waiting until Jackson Hole and was cruelly forestalled until today, is over. And the bear market, which is been held hostage by the man in front of you is once again liberated. So I feel better about being short. I feel better about trading now that this man is out of my way for a while. Now, the twist was well telegraphed, but that's all the market got. Uh, there was talk of hopes as much as a trillion new dollars being poured into the system. Some sort of madness like that. Even the likes of Zero Hedge was scaring good people like me with feelings that something shocking might be on the horizon. Well, nothing shocking came. The only shock was to the bulls who last week gobbled up stocks and are sitting on big losses now. And I think those losses will merely grow over time, Netflix style. So I wanted to turn our attention, as I always do, to the charts. Today, basically focused on some indexes and um, ETFs. And I'll go through these rather quickly. The, the first general point I wanted to make, though, is that um, Bernanke doesn't get a do-over. Uh, when the crisis was first unfolding, um, I remember distinctly, he went in front of Congress and he did his little everything's going to be fine speech and the market fell even harder when he was talking. I think his handlers got a hold of him and said, listen, jackass, say these words instead. And the next day he came back and said the right words and the market went up. Uh, he doesn't get a do-over on this one. The two-day meeting and its results are done. So... The reason I call the subject of this uh, stupid as a stupid does, D-U-H-S, is because for me the big duh back in 2007, 2008 was this giant, 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 giant head and shoulders pattern, which had this glorious fall. And I didn't take full advantage of that. Um, I enjoyed 2008 immensely, but I didn't take full advantage of that. And the duh these days is basically every single index chart you look like is screaming bear market. And that is worth noting. Now, I have been cautious until today because of the risk of the Fed. But I do think that the uh, pathway that I've outlined, which for the thousandth time is down to 1050, back up to 1250, and then back down into the bowels of hell uh, is playing out right now. So next stop on the choo-choo train is 1050. This pattern that we're presently experiencing isn't nearly as big as this one. I think the moves are going to be a little less dramatic, but will unfold all in good course in due time. Um, so having made that general point, that's what the duh is all about, because I think it's a total duh if anybody thinks this is anything but a bear market. I mean, respect to commentators who have been talking about how this is a correction in a bull market. You're crazy. So here's the first duh right here. This is the NASDAQ composite. Beautiful trend line here. As recently as yesterday, retracing up to that uh, and then beginning to fall today. Uh, I won't be drop dead of shock if tomorrow we or even this evening we lift up a little bit. Uh, we had a really hard fall today, but um, I'm feeling pretty good about the rest of this month. Commodity index. This one's a big break. Broke a major trend line 
yet another topping pattern. All these are the same. Topping pattern plus broken uptrend over and over and over and over again. Dow Jones Industrial. Uh, beautiful Fibonacci uh, time series there. It nailed the bottom to the day, which is why our next uh, kind of lifetime bottom will be February 5th, 2012. Or 2013, excuse me. February, February 5th, 2013. Uh, which kind of makes sense because after what's promised to be an amazing election next year, uh, somebody else will come in and hell will continue to break loose for a while and the things will bottom out. And then then you'll see. I, I want to buy the domain to wallofworry.com at that point because I'll be, I'll be a bull. Um, OEX, the S&P 100. Broken trend line, topping pattern, retracement, continuous of the fall. And the, these are the kinds of things that I could see heading down to roughly the areas we saw late last summer. Uh, Russell 2000, had it briefly earlier. Very nice Fibonacci arcs going on here. Could see this falling to low 600s, something like that. Socks, the uh, semiconductor. Uh, very pretty line right here, uh, dividing the former top and then resistance again here. So support becoming resistance, obeying it very nicely. The one everybody watches, the S&P 500. Um, monstrously beautiful pattern here. Profoundly important uh, horizontal lines at 1232 and also 1250. Um, and so let's, let's look for this to tumble down to around 1050 or so. And then something, I don't know what, maybe earnings will be terrific. Maybe, maybe Europe will get its act together. Something big will happen to give this, a, a one final last gasp, perhaps. I, I'm, I'm more confident of the drop down to 1050 than I am of whatever lift comes afterward. But, you know, that would make a certain amount of sense. Get back to even above where we were at in the past weeks before we head down to, you know, 800 and lower. Uh, the Dow Transports had a really down day today, and they are threatening this fan line. This could get down into the mid, mid to... Up, you know, mid to middling, 3,600, 3,700, 3,800, somewhere around there, uh, if it cuts beneath that. And XBD, which is the broker deal index, I actually thought financials might get some more strength. I'd pointed this out before. Uh, they managed to get back to this horizontal line, and that's all they had in them. I, I thought it might, 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 and regular viewers know that I was talking about maybe getting back to up to 100, didn't have the strength. Just didn't have it in it. Let's change tune here and look at a few kind of indis, uh, indicators and other items here. Here's the interest rates tumbling to never before seen depths. I haven't been touching anything bond related, but hearty congratulations to anybody long bonds. This is, I mean, if you think back to the hysterical Greek prominent vote when they voted for God knows whatever they voted for and everything would be just fine. Um, this is. What's the percentage gain here? Let's find out in profit charts. I'll just do this on the fly. Change this to a percentage graph. 27%. This is a bond fund. This is up 27% since late June. And it's a friggin' bond fund. 27% plus the dividend. Wow. Who's ever been holding this has been having a sensational year. So congratulations to anybody who has. Um, that's just amazing. I mean, talk about a one decision uh, stock, so to speak. Just buy it and forget it. All this trading I'm doing is too much work. Just amazing. Uh, crude oil. I've been uh, very loud about crude oil. This has performed really beautifully. This trend line was broken back in uh, early August. And it's um, retraced a big part of that and starting to fall again. I think this could fall much farther. I think we could be looking at much, much lower prices on crude oil. I mean, ultimately, way below the lows in 2009. But short term, you know, I could see this going to like, I don't know, low 70s. 
Precious metals I've also been avoiding. They're really weird these days. Uh, the miners are right near the tippy top of uh, that long-term trend line, and they backed away today. Um, I think kind of all assets, with the exception of bonds, have been really suffering uh, simultaneously here. Here's gold. Uh, very clear pathway down to about the low 1600s on this. Very important here. Take note, OIH broken a long-term trend line for the first time since the bottom, way back in 08, 09. Today broke the trend line. Big news. Now, I think it was yesterday. I forget. It's all blurry. Either yesterday or today, I mentioned DRN. Uh, yeah, I did. yeah, it's today because I screwed. I called it. I called it bullish instead of bearish or something. I don't know. Uh, this one was dynamite. This thing fell nearly 16% today alone. Real estate got nuked. In fact, a lot of these triple movers uh, are just shaping up to be sensational. EDZ, I pointed out. EDZ, you know, a lot of people dismiss technical analysis when it comes to these uh, leveraged items. I don't. I think a chart's a chart. And EDZ here uh, busted above this trend line back on August 3rd. Zoomed up, came down, kissed it beautifully, just mwah, and then soaring again today up 11.24%, shaping up to a very handsome breakout potential right there. I tend not to touch this stuff. I certainly don't hold it overnight, uh, but very, very pretty. Same token, FAS. Look at this poor thing. This is the financials. Look at that. Looks like Fizzler. Looks like First Solar. Uh, hardly related, but uh, the charts look similar. Getting absolutely... Uh, wang -a -a bing bam China, which the kind of gloves are coming off with China. Where I thought, oh, China will save us all. China's not saving anybody. China's going down with the ship. So we've broken beneath support on China. That's sinking fast. So God bless, uh, uh, what's that, Kinecos guy or, uh, oh, hell, I don't remember his name. Whoever the big bearish hedge fund manager is. You know who I'm saying. Um, let's see. Retail, RTH, I uh, showed this earlier, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, very nice trend line here, which was, uh, we zoomed from like 94 to 109 here, kissed it beautifully yesterday and fell back away. Uh, kind of interesting pattern there. I think some of the smaller retailers like uh, Abercrombie & Fitch uh, and Taylor uh, look awfully good on the short side. USO, back to the whole crude oil thing. Very nice uh, pattern here. Reflects what I was showing you there with a the CLX1. And then XME, profoundly weak here. Metals and mining. I guess this must be like base metals and not gold and such. See how much I know. These are just symbols to me, but handsome looking short there. Uh, the VIX, I actually thought if we did rally that the VIX would settle down back into the low 20s possibly. It's doing quite the opposite. I think we may be basing here for a push uh, back into the upper 40s and lower 50s if things get wild and woolly. Let's wrap up here. Forex can't uh, emphasize the importance of this enough. Uh, here's the euro. Um, should we push above this horizontal line at 1.3969? Looks a little darker for the bear short term. If we break beneath the lows of the 11th, 1.3493, um, paves the way for more bullish victory. And the dollar, the US dollar, um, having a nice time of it today, looking like some gaining real strength. And I'm recording this uh, in the late afternoon here in Palo Alto. Let's just take a look here. ESZ, not surprisingly, is up one. You know, so it's kind of like gasping for air here from its big sell-off. Um, question here is like, will we get beneath 1130? This trend line is important. I could see us bouncing off that. I don't see us like necessarily cutting through and plunging unless things go really bad in like the Euro. So 1130, I would say is a very logical target. Uh, NQ up a whopping 0.01% right now. Here again, uh, 2175 or so being the um, uh, target area. So in closing, Nicey summation index, not in private charts, but maybe someday, uh, again, looking, uh, encouraging at least for being kind of at a cycle top here. That is it from me, and I will uh, bid you adieu. It is happening again. It is happening again.
again.